The lithe and delicate Eldar female stood amidst a veritable sea of large and ugly, disheveled beings of a lesser race. Monke males. In these pits below the arena, they were huddled for days, kept hungry, kept primed, as their captors would say, by aphrodisiac vapors being piped into their pens that made them even turn on each other for relief. When the doors to their cages opened and none were there to stay them, all slowly and then with growing clamor poured out into the corridors and then down towards the main chamber they had passed through days before. And as the avalanche of them came into the room, there she stood, in a simple single spotlight. She was beautiful. In her skin-tight suit, she was alluring to a degree that made all who viewed her ache inside. They thought somehow that she was some form of morsel for their delectation. But it soon became very obvious that it was they who were their parity for her. As they scrambled towards her, two thin blades slipped into her hands and she moved with a precision none would survive. She whirled and pirouetted amongst them, each twist or flip or movement ending in one or more human slain, cut jugulars, impaled hearts. She went through them like a breeze. And as each one of them was extinguished, as each one's dying gurgles, exhales or screams met her eyes or ears, her skin began to tighten, her hair gained more sheen, her speed and grace were only amplified. They were her warm-up, and the pain from their souls made her form practically glitter for all to see. As the last was dispatched, and she slinked through the carcasses to the far door, the door to death, the door to destiny, the door to the arenas of Cormora. Welcome, gentle listener, I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the important factions, forces, and units of the Warhammer 40k universe, the grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace, there is only time for war. And today, we are to discuss some of the most efficient killers in the entire setting, ninjas of the night, one might say. And while we are on ninjas, let's have a quick break as I introduce the sponsors of this video. Two minutes, no more, no less. So let's have at it. Raid Shadow Legends, where you too can be a legend. With swift play and dazzling graphics on PC, tablet or phone, it's still free to play. Uh, to play, not today, uh, weirdo. With over 500 champions that can be laden down with artifacts and equipment, the potentials are almost limitless. And there is an amazing new legendary champion in game right now that some of you may recognize. It's Ninja. Ninja? No, not a ninja, but the ninja. So that's not a, but the. Ninja has a katana or bow, controls ice and fire. No, nothing to do with them. And he is a spankingly cool avatar to boot. And he has amazing passive powers and kicks ass. He floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. Like nests full of giant killer bees, actually. With the best AoE freezes in the game. And building power as a battle goes on, he literally laughs in the face of drawn out boss fights. And if you play him in the right group, he can kick the ass of any and all bosses in the game. I'm definitely looking forward to playing with him. Okay, could have been better phrased, but the sentiment stands. I'll kick ass with him. Definitely kick. Ninja is available for free right now, so everyone can get him, but only until October the 15th. He's a super limited edition champion, and once that day comes, you'll never be able to get Ninja again. So get your hands on him now. Uh. Raid is also bashing out the high quality content in the form of special fusion events to gain access to Verse of the Grim. They've also thrown in five new Cardinals of Whoop, these gorgeous champions here. So download Raid Shadow Legends today from the links in the description and pinned comment. Go get your hands on Ninja. Oh. 
you could use a techno thingy again. Handy, eh? If you do, you'll get 200,000 silver, one XP boost, one energy refill, and one ancient shard and Tronuru, the epic champion. All of the bonuses will be here, but only for new players and only for the next 30 days. And never forget the ninja action. Touch it, go on. So click the links in the description or scan the thingy. Do it now. Raid Shadow Legends. Start your legend today. Bracing, I hope, at the very least. Now, back to the lore. So, ninjas, killers, and all things lethal. But for us, today, we are to discuss the queens of the arenas of the dark city of the Elegith and Nice, the most universally hated faction in the entire setting, the Dukari, and none other than the leaders the Succubi. For the Elegith and Nice get sustenance for their leaking and wilted souls only through witnessing the suffering of others, the ultimate voyeurs, one might think. Yet it is the sublime thrill, the most succulent of sweet elixirs, for them to perform the feat of slaying all by themselves. And the Eladrithanese, the Dukari, are not like their craftworld or exodite kin. They refuse to allow their psychic ability to grow, to be harnessed. Hence they extend these energies into their physical forms, making them faster, stronger, and ever so slightly more robust than the other branches of the Elderai race. And so, as usual, for the very basics, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote, Succubai The Succubai are the ruling elite of the witch cults. Impossibly elegant and beautiful, they stalk through the mayhem of battle as if born to it. Surrounded by cliques of their lethal handmaidens who search out worthier alien opponents for their mistresses to slay. Long-limbed and athletic, each as famous across Cormara for the grace and flair of her kills. The succubi are the true icons of the gladiatorial arenas, and when they are in full flow, they enjoy an envious coast of veneration as the Dukari ever get. Sometimes informally referred to as anchorites, arena queens, or pain maidens, succubi are collectively known as the Initach, or Brides of Death. Each witch cult is traditionally ruled over by a council of three such figures, though certain cults have a dozen or more succubi compromising their upper echelons. One succubus tends to hold the true power, while those below her constantly try to outdo each other in the magnificence of their gladiatorial spectacles, always seeking to increase their dominance and popularity. Competition is fierce between them, though unlike the immortal games of the Archons, the queens of the witch cults are far more likely to resolve their feuds with a perfectly executed decapitation than with a twist of the political knife. But as with all the Dukari elite, the Succubi temporarily put aside their rivalries when leading their witch cults on real space raids. Succubi are intensely vain, and not without good reason. They draw enormous crowds who come to see their elegant butchery. Yet the crowds demand not only a bloody spectacle, but one that is pleasing to their perverse aesthetic. Witches with one too many scars will often find themselves up against insurmountable odds, their fellow combatants turning in unison on them as the crowds clamor for them to die first, purely for the crime of being imperfect. Only those who epitomize hypnotic allure and deadly skill ever make it to the ranks of the Initach. The succubi of the witch cults aggressively guard their beauty and as a result are ravishing in their physical appearance. With supple alabaster flesh clasped within bladed corsets and high-necked bodysuits of liquid silk. Their every movement is entrancing and their sinuous serpentine grace is always hypnotic as they flow through the battle towards their prey. A succubus will do almost anything to preserve her stunning aspect, including putting dozens of lesser warriors to a gruesome death moments before she enters the arena, feeding on their last gasps of anguish 
in order to better present a youthful sheen. When she descends from her lush aerial quarters onto the field of battle, it is with the arrogance and majesty of a cruel-hearted queen. Though each succubus may be delicious upon the eye, theirs is a cold and haughty allure, and one who observed a succubus with witch sight would like us not see a shriveled abomination instead of a merciless beauty of the flesh. Many of the greatest succubi seek to transcend the earthly violence of the arena and become one with the act of the kill itself. It is these most exemplary of warriors that follow in the wake of the dark muses, hoping to become synonymous with a certain style of murder in their own right. Currently amongst their ranks are the lethally amorous Helica Venomkiss, Ictria the Flare Queen, whose flaring temper is legend, and of course, Lelith Hesperax herself, who once famously decapitated a dozen rival witches with her signature bladed pirouette. No succubus is secure in her position without constant and undeniable proof of her skill. They regularly take the lead in the war against real space, not only for the Feast of Plunder, but also to hunt the champions of the lesser races and defeat them in showy displays of sheer skill. Though the Drukhari generally look upon the defenders of humanity with contempt, a succubus would gladly duel a chapter master of the Adeptus Astartes, for even in Komora, such a kill carries serious prestige. It is not unusual for the trophy collections of a succubus to boast the head of an orc warboss, a synapse beast of the Tyranid High Fleets, or, most coveted of all, an autarch of the craft worlds. Aside from the sheer adrenaline pumping thrill of it, each such personal conquest is an opportunity for a succubus to prove her supremacy with a trophy kill. The more witnesses, the better. End quote. Ballet dancers of butchery. They are as close to the skill levels of the Harlequins as is possible for any Eldar that is not one of that fringe group of their race's culture. The differences between them are huge, but not on the battlefield, not in their skill levels. The Succubi are as close to death incarnate as any being can gain without donning the helm of the Incubus, possibly. But it is not so huge a step, and not so different a discipline, really. Both are terrors to the enemy, and there are few beings in the galaxy that can truly threaten them. For as we have heard, it is the Succubus who can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the very elite of the Adeptus Astartes, the Space Marines. And Space Marines are about as far from baseline human as one can get. Biological weapons designed to kill. The Space Marine is not really that different to the Succubus. Yet in the Succubus we see a baseline Elder, no matter how disciplined, talented or driven, matching up to the best of the Marines. Yes, the Eldar are indeed a lethal race. Entirely created for the one act, really. War. By the Old Ones. Now, just think of how much more powerful the Eldar race is one to one against the human. Now, some succubi have been known to take entire cocktails of stimulants before performing. Yet at their apex, Lerith Hesperax is one who claims to never have even historically taken stimulants of any sort. For she is the Bride of Death the head of the largest and most powerful of all of the witch cults of Komara. Yet every day, there are those who rise to challenge her. The Eredrithinis prey on themselves even more than they do any other race. Their top treats the others of their kind, the Elder themselves. And they wonder why their race is waning. This, this is the reason. More than even the birth scream of Slanesh, that wiped out 90% or more of their people, for that was 10 millennia or more ago. The Dukari and the Eldar know how to clone, know how to breed entire armies in mere decades, yet they would rather stay each other in warped and twisted pantomimes than to reclaim their place as the masters of real space, showing just how far these denizens of the Dark City have truly fallen. For they no longer truly care for anything outside of their realm. And in the pits of Komara, there is nothing but sadism, murder, 
pain and misery. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.